So like every single person in tech, I'm testing Manus AI. And then do one magical high value thing. Um, what I will say is that figuring out use cases is still feels new. Still feels pretty, pretty new. Um, I have done a couple things where I upload like audio files. I've done a couple research-based things, but I find myself kind of like early days of ChatGPT. I guess I should look up here. Early days of ChatGPT where I feel like I'm in discovery mode. It feels like a, not a brand new paradigm, but a decently new paradigm that you kind of got to poke and prod at your own imagination. Um, and I do remember in early days of ChatGPT that I found myself going to ChatGPT to also brainstorm interesting things. And so I would go to ChatGPT and say something like, you know, I have, I have cracked the perfect prompt to be able to do this, 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 this. If I want to do this, how should I ask it? Or I've cracked the, you know, cool use cases of this, this, this. Give me 10 more that I haven't thought of, 10 radically different ideas that cut across use cases like, uh, you know, health and wellness, family bonding, and supply chain management or whatever. And I would kind of use the tool itself for uh, creative brainstorming past a couple of the steps that I had done. Uh, Manus AI, I think, is still in invite only mode. Um, for what it's worth, if you are someone with a large social media following, I think it is relatively easy to get uh, reviewed and approved. I think my approval happened in like a couple minutes. Um, for for other folks, honestly, if you just type up like a good reason of, of why you want to be invited um, and given access, every single company benefits from users testing and experimenting with their tools and sharing back what they've learned. Um, okay, so let's, now that it's kind of done a couple steps, let's just see what it's pulled off so far. So I uploaded a video. The video is something like a minute long. It's a demo that I did of a previous tool. Um, uh, sorry, a previous demo that I've done of, of a tool called Cove AI, which I love. So I uploaded a demo of Cove that was uncut and said, cut this video into three moments, select moments with grand reveals, provide the timestamps. I could imagine, obviously this is like a pretty long process, but you can imagine like an automated workflow that then sent this off to a video editing type of agent or then automatically sent an email to your video editor who is on a different time zone than you or whatever you're racing. And so you, could, you can start to picture that this is not the only step, right? Or that things improve and get tied around. Um, I think a lot of people are like imagining that you go into this browser and that it does every single thing for you and then they're bummed when it doesn't actually edit the video. Think of this as a component. Um, okay, so I asked for that task and it's doing its own reasoning and it's laying out the steps that it might take. Now, I have not done crazy digging to figure out what models Manus AI is using. I assume that they are using their own. Manus is based in China, so the likelihood that they're using a company like OpenAI or Anthropics models, pretty darn low. Maybe they're using DeepSeek. Um, but it is, it looks like it's already getting errors or maybe it's thinking through, hold on, let me just look through. Creating the markdown file. Did I actually get to, oh yeah. Um, this is actually kind of nice that in this markdown file that they give to you, I mean, it kind of feels like it's creating its own little mini GitHub um, repo for you. But anyways, in this markdown file, it's laying out these steps and then presumably going back to, to update it. But analyze video content, great. In order to do that, it has to install the tools, which it has decided that it has done that task. It'll get the video duration, which again is about a minute. Extract frames for analysis, it's done that. Now it is presumably in the process of reviewing those frames. And so this kind of reminds me of a lot of tools. This reminds me of, you know, RIP, but like Tome app, where you would say, hey, I wanna make this PowerPoint uh, I want to make a 20 page PowerPoint about how uh, white hydrangeas make everyone happy. And then before it gave you the entire finished PowerPoint and you would look at it and go, oh, that's not at all what I wanted. I wanted this, this, this. 
um, it would give you a preview of that PowerPoint. And then it would say like, do you like this? Do you wanna switch any order? Do you like this style? Before it spent a lot of compute to actually generate um, that, that uh, 20 page PowerPoint. What I'm, um, what I'm interested in for this tool and for really any other is what is that process of step approval? Eventually, and I have not yet seen it, but eventually agents will get good at general tasks where all the steps that it laid out, including things like PowerPoint creation, are good enough or have enough context or have enough memory about you that a human reviewing those steps wouldn't actually add a ton of value because you've approved things in the past and you've blessed it or because it has enough information that it would be customized to you. For something like extracting video clips, this is not the most subjective thing, right? Like if I am reviewing video clips or if these three other people are reviewing video clips, all of us are going to need to open the video, which would be Manus's way of installing the tools, right? We have a, a software that already sits on our laptop. Manus needs something to be able to review it. We would already kind of look at the video and naturally go like, oh God, how long is this video? Is it 20 minutes? And so I should speed through it or is it like two seconds and I'm gonna, it's gonna be a lot easier to pick the clips. These are things that like, again, not subjective. A, a, uh, an expert might be a little bit different here, might use better tools, uh, might use automated ways of kind of checking frames. Um, and it, it what might not be like a frame by frame analysis, but it might be that they, you know, quickly go through the entire timeline and when a big image shifts, that'll be a moment. Like I, I'm not a professional video editor, but experts aside, um, this is less objective. Uh, where did that come from? Okay, so that was the to-do file. And so now you can kind of see it executing on those steps. You can see it going through, you can see it extracting the video frames, you can see that it is trying to do this video content analysis to identify three key moments. Um, I'll also say that like this task, I'm not gonna say it's easy, but it is interesting to note that something like this could already be done by Google Gemini because Gemini can take in video files. I picked this because ChatGPT and Claude cannot um, and so I thought it would be interesting. Okay, I've completed the analysis of your video. Let's close this up. Uh, completed the analysis where I go of your video and identified three key moments with interesting content. Here's what I've created for you. Key moment one, key moment two, key moment whatever. As the magic high value, I've created a highlight reel. Amazing. Sometimes I just like throwing onto AI, like make me something magical, make me something cool, make me something interesting. Go out of your way and, and like, if I have given you a level A, give me an A plus. If I have given you a level four, give me a level five. If I've given you four tasks, give me five, whatever. I always just kind of throw over this overly generic ask of like, and surprise me. You know, it's like when you tell uh, uh, wait staff, like bring me a dessert, something sweet, make me a drink, something with grapefruit. I hate grapefruit. Uh, okay, so it decides to, to do that and Unlike Gemini, it actually creates that final video file for you. Um, I could also say, you know, convert this timestamp thing into an email that I can send. I can download it as a PDF. I can copy the thing and immediately bring it in. I can download it. Um, it is also telling me the description of each of the key moments. Maybe helpful if I wanted to, like, again, from a more subjective view, decide whether these clips were the right ones. But let's see how good this is. So we can already see, by the way, that it was an eight minute, uh, sorry, eight second video and not uh, 47 seconds. I did not see, let me just see that one more time. It didn't look like it actually clipped three things together. Is that just one constant clip? Yeah. Um, show all attachments. Oh, that's, ooh, ooh, because I did not click enough. All right, that was one of the key moments, then key moment one and two. So let's now look at the highlight reel. My apologies. Highlight reel is, okay, we're clicking in. Let's see if it does any sort of, okay. I could probably also prompt it with like, that was great, improve the transitions between each of those clips. 
and it might be that the um, library or software, or whatever that it downloaded, would have that capability in it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty freaking cool. Um, and then share menaces, da da da. It's an interactive website. What I love about this, and what Claude is so strong at doing, and what I'm hoping that every single AI model or AI assistant comes out with, is what I call next best action. NBA. And Claude was kind of the first assistant to do this, which was, great, I have asked Claude to write an email, you know, to my, to my landlord asking for a discount, whatever the thing is. So great, Claude's going to write that email. Now Claude has a million bajillion examples of a bunch of people asking for an email or maybe even asking a landlord for an email. They have data on what was the next thing someone asked for. If 50% of the time, when someone asks for an email and they get one back and the thing says, oh, can you give me another version that's shorter? Then the next best action that they can either automatically do for you or prompt you and ask you for is, hey, Ali, I've gone ahead and written that email to your landlord for you. Also, if you wanted a more concise version, here's that more concise version. So it meant that I didn't have to make that leap. I didn't have to review it, I didn't have to whatever. It automatically gave me the two options. Now it cost fractions of a cent to add that on into the output tokens that it gave me. And it was worth it, right? That trade-off is worth it. If it's something like creating an entire web page, that is much more expensive. And so you don't wanna do that automatically unless the cost drastically drops. So something like that might be prompted to the user to say, do you want me to create an interactive website? Because all the times they tested or all the times someone else wanted to make these key highlight reels or whatever, that someone went, also, can you make a whole web page for it? And so they've just started automatically generating that as a next best action. There are a couple others that like you can imagine more. Imagine that you ask for an entire you know, meal plan because you have allergens or something. You ask it for a whole meal plan. You could imagine that it would then prompt you to say, do you want an entire grocery shopping list for the next six months for you to plan your entire you know, health, whatever? Sure, click a button. And so you as a human are not having to make the cognitive leap. It's not a big leap, but it is a cognitive load to put on the human to say, and do you want this next task or what else do you wanna do? For the most part, people, including myself, even though I use these things dozens of times a day, people have a hard time imagining, especially when they're doing a hundred different tasks. So the AI kind of assisting in that imagination zone and giving uh, the next best action is very, very cool. And you see that with, you already see that with Replit, you already see that with Claude, you see that with Manus, but you're starting to see that a lot more. So I hope this was a, a fun demo. Again, I've been using, using Manus more for agentic things. Um, less so for just uh, general AI assistant usage. For that, I still use ChatGPT and Claude primarily. Um, but for agent things, for things that might require installing wherever, whatever the name of that thing was, FFmpeg, um, for tasks like that that might have that level of complexity, trying out Manus is very interesting. I have not dug into the terms and conditions of this tool to the extent that I would for a tool that I would rely on. And so for this, I would not put, you know, all of your business eggs in this basket, but it does give you a sense of where Agentic AI is going. All right, hopefully you guys will, will uh, see more Agentic AI demos on this channel and many others, and I'll chat with you guys soon.